God was so much with Moses. When Miriam and Aaron rebelled against Moses, God came down on the scene. I love that statement God said to Miriam and Aaron about Moses. He said, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will speak to them through dreams and visions, but not so with my servant Moses. I speak to him face to face. How dare you to talk against my man? Own sister and brother rebelled against Moses. The ones who Moses appointed as a priest and the prophetess. But Moses never argued. Moses knew his defender is God and God alone. Who is your defender? Do you get your mind all troubled and worked up about the people who hassle you and trouble you? Do you get all disturbed about the people who come against you? Do you get upset about the people who talk against you and rebel against you? I want to tell you, stop it. Stop it. God is in control of everything. God is in control of everything. He knows what's right and what's wrong. He is a supreme God who controls everything. So Joshua knew very well. God said to Joshua, As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. You will take this people. Be strong and courageous. And you shall give this people the possession of the land which I sowed to their fathers to give them. Also, this task itself is intimidating and the people's voice will often complain and tell him to give up. He must, he kept his faith in God and the promise of God's, the promise of God and he obeyed believing that God will bless him. He focused again and again with the determination on God's promise rather than everything that happens around. He believed in God. It's a promise he made that be strong and courageous. Learn to fear me every day in your life. I'm your victor. I'm your savior. I'm your leader. You know, Joshua had a successful life. At the end of the day, he divided the land, give it to all the people. And he called the people and he said, uh, As for you, now you choose between. You want to serve the God of the river, other side of the river, or you want to serve the God of this land. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Even to the end, Joshua understood what is the fear of God. And he built his life and ministry purely based on the fear of God. Foolish people hate advice. Wise people always listen to the advice. Smart people don't know what they don't know. Foolish people think that they know it all. Smart people know all the things that they don't know. So they are, they are always happy to listen to other people. Look at Pharaoh who was a walking god. He was willing to listen to Joseph who was an underdog in the jail. Sometimes you start working and you become a bit successful and things start happening in favor. You got a little money at your disposal, you got a little power, you got some people around you who will say yes sir to you. You think that you already reached. There's a name for that. It's called we have arrived syndrome. You think that you already arrived somewhere. Where? Victory is not a destiny. It's not a, it's not a destination. It's, it is your destiny. Victory is a lifestyle. It's not something that you achieve over a period of time. Your life is a journey towards the call of God that God has for you. Throughout this journey, you must remain humble, always seeking God, always looking to God for his divine counsel. You can never do things by your own. So always be careful. God said to Joshua, be careful to obey. All the laws I commanded to you. And be careful according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the left or to the right. That you may have success wherever you go. Fear of the Lord is present when we obey God. If not, we will listen to other voice. And we must not slip into one or two little areas. These are no little areas of compromise. Wherever we break the law once, we break the whole law. Whenever we accommodate someone, when we have given to the evil one. 
God said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So my friend, what about you? Do you think that you know it all? Do you think that you don't need God? Do you think that you got all the wisdom just because you've been a bit successful, because you became a little bit better, you got a better promotion, a little money? I want to tell you today, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Learn to fear God. Learn to honor God. Be a man of humility. The world tells you to be arrogant, but God tells you to be humble. Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of God, He will lift you up. God resists the proud. Every time you act arrogant, every time you act proud, you become an enemy of God. You become an enemy of your achievements. People start slowly leaving you. Nobody likes to work with an arrogant man, but everybody loves to work with someone who has a humility, irrespective of religion. People love kind people. People hate haughty and arrogant people. So make a choice this morning that you will listen to God. Make a choice today that you will be a humble person who have fear of God. Always want to listen to God. Always want to do things right. Always want to obey the word of God. May the Lord bless you for that. Only courageous people can be humble. Clever people are polite. Clever people sit and listen to others. Do you listen to other people? Do you listen to your associates? Do you listen to your subordinates? Do you listen to your boss? Do you listen to your wife? Do you listen to your children? If not, develop a habit of listening. So thank you for listening to me. God bless you that you will learn to fear God and stay humble so that you will reach your destiny. You will become a successful person. Bible speaks so much about Honoring God and fearing God. In life, many times we fail. When we come to a situation that we think we are very successful and when the success hits you, some people start thinking that I don't need God anymore. And uh, they start becoming God of themselves. And when a person starts feeling that he knows it all, he don't need a help like before, it is a first sign that he's going to fall down. There is a very old saying we all know, we all keep saying, but often we forget, says that pride goes before the fall. When you look into the Bible, you'll see a man called King Solomon, he was the wisest of the wisest richest of the richest in his century. He started off very well, fearing God, honoring God, and he could do something that even his father could not do. His father, David, wanted to build a temple for God. Uh, David could not sleep, uh, could not get sleep for a while, saying that I'm living in panel houses. But the, the Ark of the Covenant is remaining in the, in the tent, I want to build a tabernacle, I want to build a temple for God. But God did not let him build it. But God chose Solomon to build the temple. And Solomon built this magnificent temple. And he dedicated the temple unto God with all godly rituals and sacrifices. It was so much, God's presence came and filled the temple. The people could not even minister and God even came down and said, I have chosen this place. I have selected this place as a place of worship forever. And when people turn away from their wickedness and call my name, I will be listening and my eyes will be attentive and I have chosen this place.